Are we alone in the universe? Are there others? What do forms of life need? For example, we human-like beings, we need, of course, air. We need oxygen. Are there other forms of life? Of course, there are forms of life. The so-called anaerobic bacteria, they need no oxygen. Oxygen is for them like poison. Or even in the heat of a volcano, there are bacteria who survive. So the question already in the beginning of the 50 was, our form of life is probably not unique in the universe. There might be different forms of life which have nothing to do with our form of life, with the oxygen breathing being. Well, I took this topic over and asked, are we alone? In the meantime, I'm definitely sure we are not alone. In 1968, all the, the so-called clever or serious scientists attacked and came and said, e Eric, even if extraterrestrial life would exist, even if we expect, uh, expect this as a speculation, we would never come together because the distances between the stars are too far. They are measured in light years and nobody can reach these light years. You would need the speed of, speed of light or something like this, which practically is impossible. So even if they do exist, we do not come together. Already in 1968, I was completely against it. Of course it is possible to come together with life in outer space. Simply, if you use a mother spaceship, what is a mother spaceship? A gigantic construction in which generations live. So the children make children and the children make children, etc. Even if such a mother spaceship could only travel with 2% of the speed of light, it would reach the distance of 10 light years within 500 Earth years. So it is quite possible to travel. And I had this meaning already in 1968. It is quite possible to travel in space without very high speed. It will work and we have been visited. In the past, these extraterrestrials were here and they had contact with several humans. These humans learned the language of the extraterrestrials. And some of these humans asked them, where do you come from? And they always point to the sky and said, from up there. They even give the names of some solar systems which we cannot understand. No one said, we come from Atlantis or we come from another continent. They always said, we can from outer space. Now, theoretically, you cannot exclude the following speculation. Imagine our own human society would have been high advanced some 10 or 20,000 years ago in the past, and our advanced civilization would be destroyed for whatever the reason is. But before the destruction, one of our own spaceships disappeared into the outer space. And now, after a few thousand years, our own people came back to see what happened on our planet Earth. So in this version, I would still be right. Yes, we were visited from extraterrestrials, but the extraterrestrials are our own ancestors. I mean, we have several examples, not only in the Bible, but in the text of Ap Apocryphic or in the, in the Arjuna text, which is the Mahabharata of, of the old Hindu literature. Look, they took some of the boys, these extraterrestrials, they took some of the boys on, on our planet. They teach them their language. The boys had to learn the language of the extraterrestrials. Then they learned them to write. And then they dictated them all kind of thing. In one of the later I interviews, I will clearly make two or three examples clear to this, but you can watch it already in the Bible. I mean, Moses is talking with so-called God, but not with the real God, with an extraterrestrial. And what do these extraterrestrials tell him? They tell him clear how, what he has to do when his people are, are, are infected by, by, by some bacteria. They tell him clearly, they give him differences. They tell him, we have come up from there. We are part of the universe. Moses is only the, the student. Or later in the, in the Bible, we have a book like Enoch. Enoch was taken away by the extraterrestrials. They teach him. 
or read in the Bible the book of Ezekiel. It's in every Bible and at the end of the Old Testament. Ezekiel sees somebody descending with loud noise, smoking, trembling, etc. Then they take him away. They bring him to a very high mountain. They explain him a lot of things. Why? Because they knew all this information would go into the holy writings, the holy scriptures of mankind, and would survive thousands of years ago. And later, in the far future, the humans would read these texts and they would realize, hey, this is not human. These are informations of a scientific way, informations given by extraterrestrials, and it must be extraterrestrials. Why? One short example, in the book of Enoch, Enoch is a young boy, he learns the language, they teach him. One of the teachers says to Enoch, human, look out the window. Do you see this little light out there? You humans call it moon, but the moon has no light by itself. The moon receives his light from the sun. And he explained to Enoch why sometimes the moon is full and half and half empty, etc. This is scientific information given to a Stone Age boy before the Great Flood. So in all these examples, the so-called natural explanations doesn't help. We have scientific information that makes everything clear. They were extraterrestrials. They teach some of our young people. I mean, practically every mythology begins that some beings descended from the sky and some of these gods had sexual intercourse with humans. These extraterrestrials had the same sexual apparatus as the humans because we are the offsprings of them. And by the way, all this crazy idea of having sex, humans and non-humans, is not, has not created my own brain. This comes from the old holy writings. Please, your critics, take the old Bible or the Torah or the Holy Koran. And in all these books, in the beginning, they say the gods created humans according their own image. According their own image, they created the humans. The basic information of the DNA was already coming in from outer space to our planet Earth. So evolution created the being like one of our primitive forefathers, and I would say it in non-scientific terms, some of the apes. Now still today, all of our family, take an ape, take a gorilla, take a chimpanzee, they still all exist, but none of them have become intelligent, has created culture, songs, tools, etc. Only we, we have spread out, out of the family of gorillas, chimpanzees, etc. Only we, because the gods made it. They created humans according their own image. How is that practically possible? You simply take a cell of one of these primitive beings, let's say one of the apes of our forefathers. You change the cell, you change the DNA code in the cell, which practically every genetic student today knows how it works. Then you put the cell in a liquid of nourition. It grows. You put it into the womb of a female of the same species. The female will sooner or later give birth to a child. And the child has, of course, the evolution of this planet. We do belong to this family. I mean, the skeleton, the bones, the head, the chest, it's all the family. But because of this artificial mutation, and the word artificial is very important, we spread out of the family tree. And this is handed down in most of the mythology. We are the product of evolution, but not only. Somebody helped to change our evolution. If we would have the libraries, one would be enough. I would have no problems at all to explain my position that the gods, the extraterrestrials, visited our planet because it, because it would be part of all these books. Now I have to find arguments, indications, and we have enough indications. There are millions of books who were destroyed. Some of them destroyed by natural catastrophes, like floods, 
earthquakes and so on, volcanoes. But the biggest part of these millions of books were destroyed by the humans. It was always the same story. They had war and the winner destroyed the books of the loser because they want to overtake their culture. They did not want that the, 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 the loser continues with his religion, with his culture. That's why the humans always destroy books. And thus it is correctly, it's not the question of thousand or ten thousand books. It's a question of millions of books. Today, every society, every culture, every city has its own library. I'm living in a little country, Switzerland. We have a Swiss national library, which of course holds millions of books. Now my neighbor countries, Germany or France, they also have millions and millions of books. In the past, it was the same thing. Every culture had their books. You know, the first people in, in humans past who started to write were very educated people. Writing was an art. Only a few people know to write. Now these first writers were not liars. They could not sit down and write on, on, on some papyrus, some science fiction story. No, their teacher was standing behind them. And all what they were writing at that time was the truth, was their knowledge. And it is the oldest writings which tell us that the gods were here and the gods created humans and half humans and half men. For example, in the Sumerian Gilgamesh epic, which belongs to the oldest writings of the world, they say that the, the gods created a being with the name of Enkidu, partly human, partly man, etc. And it is these old writers who tell us the story of the gods. It's not their invention. And of course, they write us about technological stuff. You know, if today an ethnologist would go to a a, a, a Stone Age tribe, still existing today somewhere in the jungle of South America. The Stone Age tribe has no idea of technology. The same thing in the past. So our ancestors, they have seen technologies of their visitors from the spies, from the sky, like a flashlight, like a, a, a weapon, like dynamite, because the earth was thundering, they were looking for raw material, etc. So all these reports, I consider they are very, very true. You cannot invite these things in the brain of a Stone Age man.